Hello and welcome to the tiny workshop. Um, this evening we're going to be talking about um, creating a, um, a miniature ar armature. This miniature armature here. Here it is. This is going to be um, what we're going to be creating. Uh, this is based on a larger armature um, designed by Andrew Sinclair, um, of which uh, the metal, um, the armature wire, uh, in this case aluminium, is going to be um, is going to be bent to a, um, a form that is uh, the correct uh, skeletal structure for a uh, an armature. Um, all the details of this can be found in Andrew's book, and that is the uh, the art. Of Earth and Fire by Andrew St. Clair. Um, it has uh, everything you need within the book. As you can see, detailed instructions on how to bend the armature. Now, in the book, it illustrates uh, how to bend um, how to bend aluminium armature and that square section armature, uh, which you can buy from from most uh, shops. As you can see, this is a larger larger piece, but it's. Um, it comes in various different sizes. This is a three millimeter, and most of the book illustrates three millimeter um, armature. Or if you're working on uh, imperial, uh, it's two eighths, I believe. Um, you can actually check the section of the the armature if you like um, on here, and that is in fact two two eighths um, or three millimeters. That's one of the... There you go, three millimeter. So. This um, this tutorial uh, is thanks very much to the Sculpture School. Um, as I can say, say, you can find all of this in the book. There is also a video available from thesculptureschool.com, um, and there is also uh, lessons that Andrew uh, runs, which are um, for figurative sculpture, uh, part two figurative sculpture, which is uh, posed um, figures. He does hands, feet, head. Uh, they also do drawing as well. Um, now, it's part of it, portrait drawing um, and painting. Um, it's they are really worthwhile going. He's an incredible instructor, a very good teacher, um, and um, I think any money spent with Andrew is money well spent. Uh, so I'm going to show you actually how to make a smaller version. This is this is really it's a it's about six inches tall, um, and what I've done is I've scaled down um, one of Andrew's uh, previous. Uh, PDFs uh, so that um, it originally was 315 millimeters which is is just about the length of this ruler so you can actually see that the original one that I did was about was about the same size as this so I've scaled it down quite considerably um, but then the beauty of these 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 are uh, drawings are is you can scale them to any size that you want all you have to do is figure out exactly how high you want it and then work out how how big you print it um, I've printed out several several different sizes, uh, larger sizes, smaller sizes. I've even gone smaller than this to create um, armatures that are uh, about three inches tall uh, for various different things. This one's going to be uh, one of a, a range of um, pixies, fairies and elves um, for a display. Um, so I'm actually going to show you how to create this, this armature. Um, and I do have to credit Andrew Sinclair entirely for, for the way this is uh, this is made, um, this is not of my own design, um, because my design would be would be far far inferior to this. Um, but I found this to be the best the best solution. It creates a very in fact it creates a very nice armature in itself, um, but it also creates a very versatile armature. Uh, I can demonstrate from this this particular one here. You can bend them quite easily at the joints because uh, as you can see the joints tend to move together. Um, like those, uh, and on the arms at the top, you can you can move them quite quite because it just un unbends. Everything is is really really quite flexible, um, and and easy to, to to manipulate to where you want them to be. So moving on, the materials that we're going to be using to do this, um, I like to use a chicken wire. Now the chicken wire on this particular um, occasion is a galvanised chicken wire. It's actually quite bendy. Um, it's it's a mild steel, so it's it's very easily easily uh, bend it bent, um, and uh, it's about I think it's a 1.5 millimeter 
thick. You can buy it from any home store, any any DIY place, because it's actually, like I say, it's just come. It comes in rolls. It comes in rolls like this, so you know, it's quite quite easy. You can use um, bonsai wire. Bonsai wire is an aluminium, but it's also been um, covered, um, anodized with a um, with a coating to um, protect the tree, I, I guess. Um, but actually, yeah, you can still use it. I tend to use it for making um, hands, uh, as instructed by um, Andrew. Uh, it makes really, actually, quite quite nice little hands, as you can see. Uh, and it's all, they're all bent up. Um, I find that the uh, the um, the bonds are well easier to manipulate when when um, bending the fingers um, to do these. Um, and it's actually quite still quite strong. I mean, it's you know they're they're quite they're not flimsy I mean it's you know on its own it's actually very flimsy but until when you put the bends in it it toughens it up quite a lot but it's still flexible because of the bends it's incredible lovely really really good good stuff so um, moving on moving on we're now going to um, create an armature so the first part of this is you actually take two pieces of wire and two pieces of wire need to be crossed over. Now I tend to work in the centre uh, of the wire on these particular ones. I don't measure anything on this particular occasion on this on this section uh, because all I need to do is connect the wire to make the backbone. That's the, the important part. Uh, this uh, design has got the um, parts marked out. I've marked extra parts because I tend to work on and everything until I start bending it. Um, so it's got extra extra bits on there um, but generally you start off with the uh, the um, uh, the backbone and you work down through um, either the legs or the arms I'm going to work from the backbone then I'm going to do the arms with that with the head attached and then I'm going to put the legs on it I think in um, in the instance of these larger ones the measurements are quite precise on these ones because it's actually it's a bit more expensive it's not massively expensive to, to make these but it is a bit more expensive than, than the arch one this is pennies this costs pennies to make um, as opposed to you buy a roll of, of, of armature wire and it costs you about 15 pounds uh, to make so um, 15 so 15 pounds to buy the roll uh, and you only get a couple of couple of meters out of that one so the first thing I do is um, I need to bend bend the wire um, over you can actually have it either way it doesn't matter at this point in time um, I tend to sort to, to, to bend across so um, go forward so the first thing I need to do is to get my wire and I tend to use pliers to hold it because um, bending it by hand um, I have a sore finger or a finger that doesn't work so well so I tend to rely on tools more now than I used to otherwise I'd be doing this bare with my bare fingers you can do it you can do it it's not a um, not a major major problem um, but I tend to not do that anymore not since my finger went funny on me Right, so what you need to do is make sure that your your crosses on here um, actually um, rest on the marks of the neck joint and the hip joint. So you're bending it to to, to suit. Um, as you can see from here. Um, it's going to cross here and this one will sit quite well there. So it actually sits very well. That's exactly what I need it to do. Uh, you'll notice that there's a slight kink in here. Don't worry about those. I mean they are they're just they're just kinks. They're not going to de destroy it. I tend to get a bit funny with them and just give them a pinch and they and they flatten out. They're not, they're not major, but sometimes you, you can do that. It's not a problem. If there's kinks or it doesn't wind quite so well, it's not a, not a major issue, not a major issue at all. Um, so anyway, uh, we're going to call this the bottom and this the top. Now we're going to be working on the neck piece for this one. So I, I find the center of my wire by um, balancing the wire on my finger, like so. And you will find the natural center. Take your marker. Give it a marking. And this is just so you can actually bend it 
in the correct place. I tend to use a stick or um, whatever medium. You can you can just bend it by hand. It's not a problem. But I find the stick actually helps, so I can then fold it over. So the one thing you need to do is make sure you get your your bend in the right way, and that's just really where the cross the the, the line crosses. So this one underneath, um, or the, this one on top, you need to make sure that when it fits to this, that they actually fit together. Now you can see from this, I've actually bent it the wrong side because it won't it won't slide in, and it wants to just run off to the side. There's no natural natural way for it to go. So the best thing to do is to swap over, so that now it's the other way round. And what you'll actually see from that is that when it slips together, it's, it, it fits. It fits nicely together. Okay, so once you've got that correct, you then take your pliers, your swap hands. Okay, and again, bend it in. Now, again, just moving this to the side. You just need to measure. Always measure. As you can see, that's too short. I need that to be up there. So probably about three bends on that, that section there. Okay. And don't worry, if you go too far, you go too far. It's not a problem. So you can see from that one, I'm actually one bend too much. So just gonna unbend that. No problem. Okay. Straighten up a bit so it's easier to fold into the next piece. So that should should fit. So there you go. That actually fits quite nicely there. Um, as you can see from here, it actually on the on the, the thing is actually pinched together. I tend to do that at the end, um, but you can do it any time you like. But I'm going to I'm going to show you how how to do that. Just basically pinch it together like this. Just pinch it up, and that will then take that to the top. It will be the right thickness. As you can see, it fits perfectly on there. Again, it's just it's a nice straight straight link. So into this one, and as you can see, it actually fits together. If you just hold it, you can actually it it wants to hold itself. It's actually really and, and keeps it nice and straight. So it's almost like it's got wings. I mean, at this point, you can actually, if you wanted to add extra sets of arms, you just make your arm arm structure a little bit less. That would be there. The first arm would come in here, then you'd make another loop that would go through to the other arm. So you'd actually end up with a lot more. I may do a demonstration of how to put, make four arms or extra legs and stuff, because it actually just, it lends itself to being so quite versatile, um, this design. And uh, I think it's it, it's taken him quite a while to, to come up with the design that actually works on, on multiple levels. Um, it's just such an impressive, way of doing it as you can probably guess I'm a bit of a fan so bending the wires out now normally on the larger models uh, you'll notice that you only go down as far as the elbow uh, and there's a good reason for this that's because on the larger ones um, you want to attach the hands to something now I don't on these smaller ones actually make hands um, because I tend to, to work on the basis that if I need the fingers spread, then I will probably try and attach uh, a hand. But I tend to do a lot of my fingers either clenched um, or in a sort of like a, a spade kind of um, action. Um, in which case I will do a very, very crude thumb uh, and, and fingers. But as you can see from this one, I only go, you only go down about halfway to the elbow because onto the hand you'll actually want to, to attach a hand. Uh, and that's that's where the this, this pipe comes in. This is k &S metal. Uh, this is aluminium, you can get brass. Uh, and that tends to fit on there. Now this is not designed for this particular uh, model, um, but you can actually see from that um, how it fits on. It should theoretically be about there, because this is to the wrist. Um, so I would normally cut off about this, 
put it on there. Once I'm happy with where it is, I'll then clamp this on into the position I want, whether it's like this, like this. But again, even if you've clamped it on, you can still twist the metal to actually make it move where you want it to go. It's not cast in stone. Um, well, at least until you finish your sculpture anyway, and then you can cast it wherever you want. So, moving forward. So, I'm going to take that right to the end because I know that I'm going to run out of. wire Oops. struggle with these sometimes with you okay right okay and you just straighten that out as you can see from here the um the wire is crossed over and you see where it crosses where it goes through this one down to here and then through this one down to here and likewise if you flip it over you can actually see that again the same it flows out um, I think it's just such a nice such a nice way of doing it because everything is quite neat and I get a little bit finickety with my neatness um, I actually wonder whether any of my sculptures ever get finished the amount of fiddling I do with the textures and, and stuff. You probably find you're the same as a certain point where you're just you need to go, oh stop. But this just works straight away. Okay. So, you can see he's got excessively long arms, but that's okay. Excessively long arms are fine, that means we've got plenty of material to work with. And likewise with these, it's pennies. It's just pennies. As you can see, so we've now got the top and the shoulders set in. We're now going to do his legs. His legs are the same, same principle, you have to find out where the centre is, so balance out the centre. Mark it. Now this one we don't put a bend in. No bend necessary for this for this one. Uh, the reason being is because the, the 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 arms are crossing over in a four pattern. So what you needed to do was to to make a a, a neck and head. Um, whereas this one is actually only forming out of three. So what happens is you need to um, align this so that it's in uh, over the top of the under. And under the overtop, you see what I mean? So it actually sits on nicely on there. And again, using the pliers because they're just the easiest thing to, to clamp any of these. So putting the pliers on there, I bend his arms away because I need a little bit of space to do this. Now, because this is the other way, you're going to have to not twist it this way, you're actually twisting it the other way. So we're going to put in the first twist here, and that's going to take it that way. Now, what I tend to do with this is not go all the way. I only go really as far as down, part of the way down the leg, just to start off with. Because what I want to do is I want to make sure that this one here is correct as well. So I will twist that. And notice I'm not using the pliers because now I've got something man enough to, to, to or woman enough if you see what I mean. Hefty enough to be able to, to do it. So this will then flow down this way and the bottom one will flow the other way. And you see how it interlocks, it's just such a nice, neat way of doing it. So once I've got that and I know that this is all is all neat and tidy and it's it's well linked up, um, I can then twist my legs all the way out. Again, it doesn't have to be neat and tidy. It can be quite rough, it's not a problem. What you don't want to do is just what wrap one around the other. You want them to actually twist into each other. So it's very important to twist them together. Uh, if you start to wrap them together, you see from here, you've got one running through. It goes a little bit strange. Um, we can sort those out. It's not a, not a major issue. And I'm going to show you that in a second. Once we've got to the end of it. Very important to finish off one side. Again, we've got excessively long legs excessively long legs okay 
So if you've got anything that's where it's, it's started to wrap around, all you have to do is just pinch it together in around it like this. And what you're actually doing, you're just bending and putting the kink back into the to the wire. You, know, you don't need it so much on the end. But what you're actually doing is you're allowing it to, to kink up and just straighten out slightly. Again, this is a skeleton, it's not, you know, it's not a major issue that it's it's got a, a strange twist in it somewhere along the line. Um, it's not going to be perfection, but to be fair, when you've done a few of these, you're actually going to find it a lot easier to to do. I'm trying to figure out a way of actually doing this spinning of this wire without using my fingers. Um, but it really is the best tool for the job at the moment. Take it all the way to the end. Okay, again we've got a couple of wrappers there. Just open them up. As you can see they straighten up reasonably well. Okay, so now we have like the H kind of shape of somebody doing the splits with their arms out. Ta da! Just hands. Okay, so as you can see from this, he fits quite well there. Um, you've got tolerances, I suppose, with it with most of these things. Um, he actually fits quite well onto this particular. Well, so what we're going to do is we are going to mark out the bend points, the points of the joints, the shoulders. Um, down the bottom here, we're going to mark out those parts, these hips, um, and then what we're going to do is we're just going to bend it on the on the hips. I tend to work on bases that I think is going to want to bend. completely the wrong direction so so that's the hips as you can see they fit on there quite nicely and likewise for the arms Slightly off with that one, but mm, no, actually, that's not, that's not bad. I can cope with that, that's fine. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is mark out each each of the arms correctly, and then where we're going to cut. And you can see we've got quite a bit that's actually going to be lost to, um, to cutting off. But it's not a problem. As I said, it's pennies. I mean, if you want to measure these out, you can you can measure them out, and then just give yourself an extra an extra bit. Um, but generally, it's you know it's. I think if you if you saved up everything you threw away, you probably would have a real lose fifty p, which isn't a lot really. You need to sit if you sell your, photo, your, your sculptures, then you probably make a load of that back. So, correct position, the knee, the ankle, and the toe. Okay, so it's very important that you do that, the knee, the ankle, and the toe. So the knee, the ankle, and the toe the toe is the bit that you're going to be stapling to the floor if you're standing up if not then it's the bit that you're going to be making your I tend to pinch these together just to make sure I've got roughly in the right place yep. okay so now we have our 
arches. Let's just bend him on his joints like that, like that, like that. As you can see now, the joints are bent, um, and the ankles or the heel just here. Again, you can pinch them together to make sure they're in roughly the right place. As you can see, I've got that right ish. Maybe a little bit over bent. But anyway, so there you can see we've now got the armature. Now, what Andrew uh, will then go on to show you in is the um, dynamic curve. There's a set of these drawings. Um, this uh, guy. Um, is um, I don't know if it's still downloadable, um, but there are a set of drawings um, that you can can use. You download. So once with this, once you've got your your armature, you can actually then, um, as I say, I staple mine down um, as instructed. These ones I don't. You don't need to flatten the feet out on these ones. On the larger armatures, you do because uh, they need to. Um, they need to be able to, to sit flat and flush um, because you're not actually building the foot up around it you're actually building the foot on top of it um, uh, unless of course the you know the armature is has the person's leg up in the air and then you're building the foot on top of it and that in, you need to hide this as much as you possibly can um, so yeah getting this nice and flat is really really ideal really really ideal so yes, yeah, so you compose your 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 figure to to where you want them to be. Um, another one here, um, just to, to demonstrate how I use use the feet. Um, you can see I've stapled these down. You can anchor them. I tend to not with these little ones. The time I put clay on it, they they tend to self support. Um, they are they are very good. Um, and yeah, this one's lifting, and this one is 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 begging. Um, or looking out of the a jar has been captured. So, anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. Again, well, I'm going to put a few um, links at the bottom. Um, if you enjoyed this video, I hope you subscribe. I shall be doing some more um, more action poses, um, but also some sculpture tips, um, material um, reviews. Um, hope you enjoy the tiny workshop and um, come back soon. Thank you.